Welcome back to Airborne and welcome to part three of the 24 ton hydraulic press build. Right now your press should just be an empty frame without any components on it. But today we're gonna to take that frame and turn it into a fully functional hydraulic press. So where we left off in the last video of the trolley or the carriage should just about be finished uh, and roughly setting in there in place. But now we're going to pick up this trolley and drop in this hydraulic cylinder. So this is an eight inch stroke, five inch bore, a hydraulic cylinder, 3000 PSI max. And at about 2500 PSI, that gets you right around 24 uh, tons of force. If you do the math, which is plain enough for our application. So like I said, put the trolley up. We're gonna drop the cylinder into place on this bottom plate with the hole that we drilled through it. We're going to drop the clevis pin through on the top and bottom. Remember that these pins are different sizes for the top and bottom. And then we lock them in place uh, with these little pins and that keeps that from going anywhere. For operation, you need a valve to control the press. This is what we have set up currently. Uh, fluid goes into the bottom of the valve with a pressure, uh, pressure gauge on the front so that we can monitor how much pressure it's getting. And then it passes through on standby to the rear of the valve, which then goes into the filter, into the tank, back into the hydraulic system. With these two, this is where we get our control. Whenever we move this lever, it sends fluid, instead of straight through the valve, it sends fluid into one of the two uh, hoses. And depending on which direction we move that determines which direction the fluid goes in and which direction the fluid co comes back through. And with that, we get the direction with our cylinder. When we send fluid to the bottom of the cylinder, it pushes this ram up and vice versa. When we put fluid into the top of the cylinder, it retracts that ram back down. That's really important because what direction the press operates will help you when you're actually using it. For example, with our foot pedal set up, with the rod connected to it, when we move our foot, it is at the same time moving the handle on the valve. We currently have it set up to when we push our foot down, this cylinder retracts. In other words, the carriage is moving as the same direction as your toe. When we pull back, the opposite, this press starts pressing. Same thing, it follows the direction of your toe. So this way of operating the press might seem a little bit backwards with pushing down to press away from it and pulling back to press into the metal. We had it the opposite direction, but it is a little bit backwards once you actually get into it. The intuition when you're panicking is to push down on it like you're hitting a brake pedal. And that works because as soon as you kick down on it, the press separates and you press off of your metal rather than pressing into it and ruining your workpiece. Ask us how we know. So to drive the whole system, we need a motor capable of creating enough RPMs with enough horsepower to spin our pump. Right here we have a five horse electric motor hooked up to a hydraulic pump. All this info will be in the description. A lot of these exact models aren't available anymore. I know we talked about having product links for each one of these products. Uh, the links will be basically similar uh, pumps or motors that will work the same. But uh, regardless, make sure you match up the RPMs on your motor to the RPMs required on your pump. And just for information, this pump is an 11 gallon per minute pump, which seems to treat this system just well. Like I said, five horsepower motor. There are two different ways to connect the electrical wires, which will determine the direction that the motor spins. Make sure you pay attention to which direction the pump requires, and then hook it up in that fashion. In the back, we have our tank that holds all the hydraulic fluid. Ours is a 10 gallon tank, which might be a little bit undersized for a typical hydraulic system. However, our system is typically not one that sees a bunch of heavy load. It'll see intermittent presses and then brakes to reheat the metal and such. But if you were pressing nonstop all day, you probably would want a slightly larger tank. 
uh, but for our application it works fine fairly simple to hook up you hook up all these hydraulic lines as seen and just as a note for the tank it is all low pressure so you do not need any high pressure hydraulic fittings we just use some simple NPT fittings uh, including the ones that go to the filter. You'll see the filter in the back that's necessary to keep this system running clean and keep any sort of particulates outside of the hydraulic system itself. You'll see multiple different lines that are hooked up to this whole system. Note that you should use high pressure hydraulic fittings and I recommend using swivels at every connection on this press. For some of these, we only use swivels on one side because that's really all you need but the problem is to unhook it you need to undo both sides in certain circumstances so like i said use a high pressure swivel hydraulic fitting that way you can orient it in any direction and then tighten it down as desired another note the t that we used for our gauge is not a high pressure hydraulic fitting so because of that we do get a little bit of leakage they do make tees with swivels for this application. We'll link that in the description, but just know that we did not use one. And because of that, we do see a little bit of fluid loss. So how does it press? We found that the pressing power on this thing is really incredible. We can smash some pretty sizable Damascus billets with relative ease compared to the little six ton log splitter press that we've been using before. I mean, this thing absolutely crushes it. An important note is that we have some drawing dies and some foldering dies on the sides. These work awesome for light work when we're doing a little bit of spreading on some more thin material, but as soon as the material gets thicker or as soon as the presses get heavier because they're offset to the side we do see a little bit of rotation of that carriage and you have a much higher possibility of getting that carriage to bind up so to prevent that if you're doing any heavy fullering or heavy drawing you want to have a single fullering or drawing die in the center with a different die plate as shown this die plate setup is in a way that it's removable we simply can pull out the top and pull out the bottom die plates in order to change them out which would be recommended if you're doing some heavy moving but for some light work these drawing and fullering dies on the outside work really well so thank you for watching our press build series if you're really interested in this press and you want to tackle the build yourself you can find our plans for sale in the description uh, any sales go to help uh, support and fund the channel and allow us to do cool projects like these. Uh, and if you have any questions about that build, feel free to email us or comment on here or Instagram or wherever else you can find us. And uh, we'll give a little bit of an update later down the road. We've had her going for a good few months now and so far no issues. Uh, we're working out the way that we like it set up, like we mentioned with the foot pedal. But so far, it's helped us produce some really cool billets of Damascus and helped us carve out some pretty neat looking knives. So if you enjoyed this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and we hope to see you on the next project. Thanks.